There are the looks of the two television nights game. CBC's on the right and on the left ESPN 2. ESPN 2 is also known as the Deuce for those who are hip, and I think it's pretty clear I am. What's <laughs> <laughs> the matter? Let's discuss that. Let's discuss Welcome that. back to uh, Skyline, everybody. I'm Scott Oak, host of the uh, CFL on CBC. That information for those of you who are joining us via ESPN2, uh, our potential audience in North America, up to millions now. Uh, this game being covered by both networks. James Curry, our analyst, is getting some extra work tonight with ESPN2, uh, serving as theirs. Gus Johnson calling the play-by-play. -play. And on my right, Dom Whitman, a veteran play-by-play -play announcer in this country in his 32nd year of broadcasting CFL games. and. Uh, working as our analyst, former feared linebacker Dan <laughs> Kepley had a distinguished career with the Edmonton Eskimos. Gus, first to you. It's your first time calling a CFL game. What do you think? Well, first of all, I just love the excitement and I love all of the different action. I grew up in Detroit and had a chance to watch CFL football on Channel 9 in Windsor, and I remember the names, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Stampeders and things like that. It's fun just to be here and to be involved. Do you know where Regina is? <laughs> no, actually, I know. <laughs> they were teasing me about You're that earlier today. Hey, wait till he has to go there late in November. <laughs> uh, you know, James, one thing I've noticed in my incisive mind is that the dress code at ESPN2 is a whole lot more relaxed than ours at CBC. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing, to wear that kind of shirt on network TV, you got to have it. And James, you got it. <laughs> you know, it's quite comfortable, you know, to be able to come out in a nice silk shirt. Scott, you should buy yourself one of them. I'm not going to take, the, the, the take this too far, but you're the envy of all of us. Carry on. <laughs> well, the game has been quite exciting in the first half. Baltimore has made a great show of themselves for the first CFL game and I think everybody's in, been impressed that have been watching down south with this. Kep, you played for the Edmonton Eskimos during their dynasty years, late 70s, early 80s. I think if anybody had ever said to you then there, there would be teams in this league in Baltimore, Sacramento, Vegas, uh, wherever else, you'd have thought their medication would have to be changed. <laughs> I would have probably gone and cut, take some of that medication that they were on. But at this point, I, I would never thought that the CFL had expanded down to the south. But in this case, I think it's absolutely wonderful, and I think it's going to enhance the CFL, and it's going to enhance football, period. Don, what would you say to the American audience in an attempt to sell them on the CFL game? I guess, better put, how many games have you called over the years that looked like they were over in the third quarter and wound up being decided in the last 30 seconds? Hey, I've called games where I thought they were over with three minutes left with the team trailing by two or three touchdowns, and the score has been reversed. But I think one of the key things for any future American teams is to follow the pattern of Baltimore, hire people with CFL experience, Ala Don Matthews, and bring in as many players with CFL experience as you can add, because the other players on the team learn from those with the experience. And Gus, get ready, because we could have one of those wild finishes tonight. You never know. Uh, expansion is the reason that ESPN2 even has an appetite to telecast CFL games. Or you have the opinion, as are many others, that there'll be as many as four more American cities in the CFL next year. Well, I think in doing my reading and just in talking to people, you have a feeling that there may be four more teams, maybe eight more teams, maybe a shrill of teams getting ready to play in the Canadian Football League. Because if you look at the other league in the United States, there's not as much offense, there's not as much excitement, and this particular league provides that for fans. You know, James, months ago you said to me that you thought Baltimore, even then, was likely uh, one of the best teams in the CFL's East Division. I guess you're standing by that tonight, are you? Well, Scott, you know, we had that conversation, and it was key because you look at the nuances that Don Matthews and the veteran players brought to this team. They were experienced team for their opening kickoff, and that is a key that you just cannot go out and figure that you're going to get ball players that are sitting out there. You have to get ball players that are experienced coaches that experience and we're witnessing that show this evening and I think one of the other things that is important Don Matthews understands the need for speed and athletic ability in the CFL you can have big players but they also better be able to run okay we've got to move along let's have a high